Forex focus, this is the pyramid of FX. Not just FX, to be honest, but other markets, other tradable markets. So the Forex pyramid goes a little something like this. Now, I've got my little whiteboard up. Okay, please excuse the sloppiness, but it's okay. So first and foremost, we have technical analysis. Te T against F, fundamental analysis. Technical analysis, I would say, in this market and other markets as well, 90%. 90% technical, fundamental, 10%. Shortly, you will be introduced into the world of macroeconomics, the macroeconomic calendar, where I'm just going to go on and highlight a few points, to be honest, as to what to look for. Now, with this being said, now technical analysis, the study of charts, the interpretation of price movement, we need to think like the banks. We need to think like big investors. We don't need to play around like retail traders. Me personally, on my journey, two years it took me to even realize, okay, the market isn't completely random. Uh, the market isn't a mixture of retail buyers and sellers, and that's why it goes up and that's why it goes down. After losing time and time again, after jumping from system to system to system, it finally became evident that the market is quite a dark place. And what I mean by that is the foreign exchange market is controlled by 80% banks, 80% institutions who are manipulating price left, right and centre. So I'm going to go into this. For, well, by the end of this course, you're going to have a great insight into this and how it actually works on the charts. So when I say technical analysis is 90% and fundamental analysis is only really 10% of what we're going to focus on directly on the charts, I mean that through the correct use okay, of time frames, price action, reading the market properly, having an understanding that the fundamental and macroeconomic side of things are only more or less a distraction to many traders out there, um, we can put most of our energy into improving our technical skill set. So what I used to do personally is I used to wake up in the mornings, I used to um, be on MetaTrader 4, I would probably you know, delve deep into the indicators, I will be in the forums, I will be looking at um, people's systems, strategies, playing with expert advisor robots, thinking, okay, cool, there must be something out there in which will make money for me, or will simplify my ideology of making money, where I can just more or less not put too much effort in and I don't really need to use my brain too much. I used to play with this day in, day out. I was up at six in the morning. I may have been on Skype to nap throughout most of the day. And I would sit at my laptop from 6 a.m. in the morning to market close. No joke. Pop up for some food. And I did this for 12 to 18 months. Reason being is because my first ever trading account was a $10,000 account, which is around 6000 because when I first uh, found out about the market, I must have done demo for around three to four months. And I jumped straight in with most of my savings. Uh, it was a dollar account because I used um, a US broker, MB Trading at the time. And I made a little bit of money, um, probably about 20% off some decent trades. Um, but to be honest, looking back, I probably just got lucky. I didn't take any money out. And my mindset was, okay, cool, let's now get this 12 to 14 to 16 to 20 and so on. And you know what happened? I got a little bit too excited. A few too many wins and a little bit of testosterone mixed with arrogance and overconfidence. <laughs> Had a few bad trades, over leveraged, and I lost my profits and I was now in the negative. Um, my account was below 10k, and all that was going through my head was, Oh my god, I have to get that money back. And from there on, it became an emotional roller coaster and I more or less blew the account within uh, three weeks of opening it. So what I used to do in between all of this nonsense was look at the fundamental factors that were due to be released you know, for the day ahead, for the week ahead. And I used to try and trade these. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I want a 50 pip spike. I want a 40 pip spike. If I can just wait till this news announcement shows me on the macroeconomic calendar that yes, it is positive or no, it's negative. I can simply click buy and sell. So time and time and time again, I used to Google 
what's going to happen. You should go on the, the main Forex website, what's going to happen on this news event, and you're always going to get a 50-50 bias. Truth is, fundamental macroeconomics are but a mask for manipulation. And when I say manipulation, I mean price spikes. I mean to entice retail traders to go um, you know, the wrong direction. Sudden fast price moves, sudden spikes that like you see in the market are often the false moves. The real trend is the slow, um, not, not exactly slow, but the um, a medium paced, higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, you know, Fibonacci moves, nice pullbacks, um, and so on. And um, we can only really jump on these if we know the overall trend logistics on the monthly, weekly, daily time frame. So regardless of the fundamental factors uh, which may come out you know, in the day, you know, in the London session, in the US session, we have to be clued up on a technical basis, technical standpoint. Many, many people out there, they are obsessed with jumping into the market. You've got these systems, entry here, entry there, but that is not the way to go. We don't want to be looking, starting off on the small time frames, one minute, five minute, 15 minute. No, we don't want to be looking at how I can get into this market. No, we want to be studying from the top down, monthly, weekly, daily, and you're going to learn all of this. And um, we're going to be looking as to where a particular currency pair has a high probability chance of going. Okay, and when I say going, I mean, okay, let's say your USD is bearish for many different technical standpoint factors. Where can this potentially bottom out? I.e. we've got 150 pips to the downside, 200 pips to the downside. Great. Let's weigh up the risk reward and see if we can maybe even find an entry on a smaller time frame. Now, once we have that in place, yeah, we have to keep an eye on the fundamental factors. The fundamental factors, if we have our trend in place and the technicals and price action is aligning, the fundamentals will often just push the market in that direction. Before the market does go in a certain direction, just remember the currency markets and uh, other world markets as well, it is a game of net buyers and net sellers, okay? And what I mean by that, if everyone is selling, the banks need to use fundamental factors and excuses, more or less, to push the price the opposite way. One, to hit stops. Two, to entice traders to go the wrong way and act on emotions uh, before reversing and going in line with the technical factors, the technical standpoint, the technical trend overall. So just bear that in mind, guys. So technical analysis, 10%, fundamental analysis, 10%. Okay, next on the pyramid, we have da -da -da, M, M, money management. That goes hand in hand with risk reward, believe it or not. So money management, we're going to be going through that. We've got some um, calculations to go through. We've got some examples to go through. And um, to be honest, this is where a lot of people go wrong. Now, money management on the whole, some people like to, it, this is going to come down to character as well. So when I say money management, it's more or less working out 1% or 2% or 3%. Some people like 4%. Some people like even 5% of capital risk, anything above 5% is in fact a little bit reckless and I advise you not to go there. However, with that being said, this is another pillar, okay, another a huge foundation to your success overall. And believe me, if you have your risk reward in check, all right, and you'll see some trade examples at the end and you'll see throughout all of the videos, actually the technical videos, I'm always using that risk reward tool. The risk reward tool is vital. So if you have your money management in check, let's say you wanted to risk three or 4%, and it can also vary on your account balance. For instance, if you had a million in your account, you probably probably only would want to risk 1%, 10K, you know, because you're risking 1% for a 2% gain, you're risking 10K for 20K. If you have, uh, if you have your emotions in check and if you follow your rules, you've got an 80, 70 or 80% winning accuracy rate, you're gonna make a lot of money basically, a lot of pips. Now, uh, risk reward, that ties in with money management, all right. So, aside from technical and fundamental analysis, money management, risk reward, the other thing we need to be wary of are mistakes and traps, which Nat's gonna be going over, and it's also in the Astro FX book. Hand in hand with that, we have psychology. Okay, P, and I'm just going to put an either emotions. 
All right, so this is the Forex Pyramid. So when I say mistakes and traps, we're talking hedging trades, we're talking stacking trades, losing positions, we're talking giving your capital to somebody else, with all of this nonsense. Um, whereas you can actually lose way more, way more money outside of your own trades by doing dumb shit, basically. That's what it is, it's dumb shit. However, you're paying for this course, you're paying for this advice, and I can assure you I've gone through all of the mistakes which I'm now going to pass on. And trust me, if you stick to not getting involved in, in, in the mistakes and traps in the book and what that's going to go for in the other videos, you will save a lot of headache, all right? Because you can have your technical and fundamental factors in line. You can have your money management and risk reward in line. However, if you fall into the mistakes and traps out there, it can obliterate the rest of this pyramid here. Okay, so uh, psychology and emotions, uh, we're all human. We're all at different levels in terms of self-discipline. I am more of a, of a risky person, that's a conservative person. He used to always, always, always be on my case about you know, the trades that I used to um, risk in terms of too much capital risk, too many trades, over trading, uh, jumping back into trades, having a winning streak and a losing streak are more or less exactly the same. You have a few losers, you just want to get back into the market, revenge. You have a few winners. <laughs> you want more. You're like, okay, cool. I've smashed it now. I've got this. I might want to pump my lot size up. I'm overconfident. I'm ready. And you could have three wins and overconfident one trade with over leveraged uh, money management, too much risk. You can, in fact, wipe out those free trades in which you've just worked hard towards, you've been patient towards, and so forth. So, this is the forest triangle technical, fundamental, money management, risk reward. We have um, psychology and emotions, and mistakes and traps. Okay. So, let me just get rid of that for now. Now, the next thing I'm going to go over is the primary focus in this market. Pips percentages. Pips and percentage. Now, these are so, so important. So you got the pips. You have the percentage. And then you also have, which is of importance, money. Let's not kid ourselves. We're all in this market to make money. Okay, the nine to five just doesn't really cut it these days. Working for somebody else doesn't really cut it these days. And with foreign exchange and with other markets, when you learn to do it properly, when you learn to analyze price action, when you learn to give respect to your setups, your balance, your account, and yourself, over some time, you will in fact get there. So pip some percentage of first. Uh, in terms of pips, every single uh, trade setup, every piece of analysis we're going to be going over, I'm going to be highlighting the pips. Okay, we're risking 60 pips or 120 pips. We're going to be risking 50 pips or 100 pips. Whatever it may be, it's always about the pips. Once we have the setup clear, once we have the technicals and the overall trend clear, we then move on to the percentage. With the percentage, um, as I say, it's up to you if you want to risk 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, even 5%. I'm not advising three, four, five percent. I'm just saying that I'm just being realistic with people, people's expectations and risk across the board. All right. I advise when, uh, when you're learning to risk one percent. All right. So if you've got a risk reward of, okay, I'm risking 50 pips for a gain of 100 pips or 100 pips for a gain of 200 pips. If you're risking 1%, you're risking 1% for 2%. And we'll get into this at a later stage. But just to program you from the get go, Pips percentage, pips percentage, pips percentage. And, you know, if, if you've got a one to three risk reward trade, and you may want to risk 1.5 or 2% to make 4.5 or 6%. If you hit that trade in two days or even one week, varying in on, okay, you're going to be doing some intraday trades, you're going to be doing more uh, swing trades, medium term trades. Just remember that people... People put the money in ISA accounts and they get around 3% back at the end of the year. The year, yes, the year. So just compare this to 
you know, ISA accounts, other investment opportunities out there, okay? So patience is what you need, first and foremost, something that I did not have when I first started trading. And then let's not, um, let's not forget about the all-important money, the monetary figures. The money will follow naturally afterwards. Once you get the technical analysis down, once you get the risk reward and money management down, once you start focusing and working in pips and percentage, the money will follow. Now, a lot of people out there, and you'll see this on social media, or you'll see it all over the place, people just post screenshots of profits, okay? Great. But some of the profits, I see this all the time on my Facebook account. And I've looked at, you know, this guy's just made $10,000. And I'm looking at his trade, and it's a 15 pip trade, 20 pip trade, but he's, he's used a massive lot size. So, you know, $100, $200 a pip or whatever, and he's only, only really caught 15 or 20 pips. That can be quite misleading for some people. By all means, it can be done. That's a great trading style as well, as long as you are disciplined with that. But all I'm trying to get across here is don't fall into the trap of thinking that, okay, that them that um, type of profit, 5Ks, 10Ks, etc., is easy to do. By all means, it can be easy to do. Anybody can make money, but not a lot of people can make pips. You could get one guy, two traders, one of them, He's made 1,000 pips for the month, but he's only used 50p a pip, okay? okay the, uh, another trader who's made 100 pips this month, but made 20,000, all right? He's used 200 pounds a pip, but he's only made 100 pips. However, the other guy has made 1,000 pips, but due to his lot size, he's only made, he's only made 500 pounds. So who's the better trader? If we focus on pips, market movement, because trust me, it is a lot harder to make um, uh, more pips using a smaller lot size than it is to just stick a huge stake size on there and just quickly boom in and out 15, 20 pips. One, it all it comes down to your trade personality. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to express here is that the skilled person, the skilled trader, it takes a lot not only to find those setups, but to actually ride the setups out because being in a trade and trade management is where the psychological toll actually comes in, okay? So just bear that in mind. So pips, percentage, risk reward, money management, the monetary aspect of the fruits of your labor will come, okay? And that's where the journal comes in. That's where the spreadsheet comes in. Start slow, think about pips and percentage, the money will follow afterwards because one, the only thing you can really change here, you can obviously decide on your percentage risk. You can, in fact, change your capital amount through your broker, but you can never, ever, ever differentiate the amount of pips you're going to make. Okay. So once you've got this down, this too, this comes afterwards. So I hope this video helps. I'm just um, being honest. Um, by the way, we will never ever say join Astro FX. You're going to make X amount of money a week. You're going to make, um, you know, X amount of pips a day. Nothing is ever guaranteed. The currency pairs you look at may not move <laughs> for two, three days. And when I say don't move, you know, we could be in a consolidation range. We could be going sideways. So it could be a, a no trade week, a no trade day. We can never say, okay, you're going to make 500 pounds a day. Why? Because it's all going to be dependent on your capital, your risk, how many pips you're making. There's so many factors out there. So, you know, just to put it straight, blunt, we need to focus on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, work on, working on yourself. And I will say, uh, trading foreign exchange, reading markets, you're going to find a lot about yourself. You're going to find out a lot about yourself as well in terms of your inner demons, your discipline. And it does aid in personal growth as well. So hope that video was helpful. And I'm going to go on to the next one. But as I say, guys, you know, go back, take notes, draw out the Forex Pyramid, stick it on your ball if needs be, on your office, on your laptop. Hell, get it tattooed on your arms. This is your pyramid to success in the markets. No beating around the bushes. Okay, thank you.